wanted to point that detail out to you. Uh, we talked about this at length in prior meetings. I'll be glad to answer additional questions you might have. Any questions for Matt Martin? Mr. Martin. We can't hear. It's still not here. I don't hear anything. Nobody so. back there. Here. No, I don't hear what you're talking about. Right. For some reason or other, we have to get Brown in mind. I'll go ahead while he's doing that. I was going to ask the question. Go ahead. Because your mic is on, it's just turned down real low. Um, but we have a resident expert working on it right now. So you mentioned that the annexation was not recommended. Correct. Planning Commission, just like you, um, they took these as separate motions, separate items. Right. And they took action on the rezoning first. Um, and they uh, recommended approval of R15 if it is annexed. Now, as far as the annexation question goes, they recommended denial of the annexation. And as we talked about the work session, one of the uh, concerns was the timing. Um, currently, there is no proposed development for the property. It is simply development for in the future. There is no proposed layout, um, but it is, it's been, the property has been put in conservation easement. You know, so the resident experts giving theory. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, you said something. Conservation easement? Correct. It, mm -hmm. um, it's a tax savings program for the tax assessor's office. Is agricultural land. Um, a large parcel has been placed into that. Um, there's many, like everything else, there's rules and stipulations. Um, it lasts for a period of 10 years, but it can be broken um, with penalties. But generally, it is put on property that is not intended for development in the near future, which the applicants have indicated. They have no immediate plans That's for development. Right, so the applicant has indicated because of that reason. Uh, they would not be anticipating developing that particular piece of property for 10 years? Well, in the near future. Uh, if the applicants are here, you'll have to ask them those Presumably details. Presumably, it'll be 10 years, but Presumably, that it could, they can it be, it be broken. could be broken. Correct. Yeah. And basically, the penalty is if you break it after one year, you pay double the tax savings that you earned. Um, so if you wait till the ninth year, you've saved a lot of taxes, but under penalties double that. The city attorney has stated that the penalties are negligible. Yes. In the early years, it is small. And that is the primary reason why annexation is not recommended? Well, the planning commission has many members, um, and there was discussions, different points of view, the vote you know, was not uh, all the way um, But that was some of the discussion they had. They, since there was no immediate plans for development, the question they would ask is, why are they annexing now as opposed to later? And staff had the same questions. Um, as you see in the packet, staff had recommended approval. Um, because we asked ourselves that question. It's like, well, if someone wants to annex their property into the city, pay the city taxes, but not develop it, not encumber city services, is there harm in that? Um, annexations are. Your conclusion to that was? Was it's okay to annex. We recommended approval of the annexation. Okay. So we, there's two different sides to that one. We took one, the planning commission took the other. Right. Keep in mind you have standards for exercise of zoning power for rezonings. Um, annexation decisions are purely discretionary. There are no such standards. Um, so that gives you a little more leeway. Sometimes when the property is annexed, conditions are placed on it. Um, you have a lot more latitude with that with an annexation than you do with a rezoning. So just to be clear, just like the planning commission did, it is possible <coughs> hypothetically for the council to approve rezoning yet deny annexation underneath this procedure. Right, which would make then the rezoning decision moot. Okay. The important one is your second decision. Right. Just bothers me a little bit. I've seen a lot of hand waving. Yeah. A lot of waving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't plan to develop. But that doesn't, you know, tomorrow that can go away. So there's something that you've not seen anything in writing that there are plans to be in agriculture for 10 years. Well, the request is for R10 zoning, and whether it be R10 R15, if that zoning 
stage, then when, if they want to develop it for something other than agriculture, then that zoning will dictate the uses and the standards and so forth of how it gets developed. And you said R10. I thought there was a change in that to R15. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. They had actually corresponded with us. Staff had recommended R15. Planning Commission had recommended R15. Um, the applicant had sent an email to me yesterday, and they have agreed to the R15 rezoning as recommended by the Planning Commission. So, and you just said this, but allow me to ask a question, Mr. Clare. Uh, the application for rezoning before us tonight is for R15. The application is requesting R10. The recommendation is to approve R15 instead. The applicants have indicated they are agreeable to that. So if rezoning passed tonight for this particular application, it would be R15? It would be whatever you stipulated. And what are we stipulating? One of the higher zoning districts. In other words, you cannot leave the agricultural. Okay. Uh, does everyone in the audience understand about the public here with the two sides. The first one, we have A and B on the agenda that y'all are looking at. A is just for a rezoning that is not for an annexation. It is strictly a rezoning only. Now B is the one with the annexation and to save time and not have it, because we can't do one, with, we can't do the second one without the first one. We have to go through the process of that. But what we'd like to do is save the public input, input until we get on B, which is the annexation. Can't do that. Can't, you still got to have public input. I am not clearing for either and both decisions. One way is to do your public input, okay. public hearing proposal. All right, so, okay, that, vote I'm sorry. What we'll do is go into the annexation and then come back to the public input, right? Well, we have just talk through both of them for discussion <laughs> and questions, and if there aren't any further questions, then perhaps we could open up for the public hearing for okay. both items both together. Both okay. And then we you actually make motion to vote, we'll need to do them. I thought you had more room B, so that's why I was saying that. Not more than I can think of at the moment, but there's okay. plenty of information in your packets, and most of it is repetitious of the other. Well, I stand corrected. Mayor and Council, just uh, for the benefit of uh, those in attendance, we uh, placed a copy at the front of uh, a policy that was adopted by this body 10 years ago. Now it does say citizens to be heard at the top, but there is precedent for any opportunity for the public to address the council being governed under these guidelines. And uh, that has occurred in the past. One recent example is uh, the tax credit uh, proposed apartment project adjacent to Audubon Heights, in which we read this before uh, public input was received. Some of these are not applicable, and I will not read them, but they are for your information, but some are, and I will read those. Uh, the applicable starts at number four. During the session, citizens may talk to council as a whole, individual attacks or cross-examination of council members, or city employees will be ruled out of order. Abusive language will not be tolerated. Five is not applicable. Six, citizens are requested to keep their comments limited to three minutes or less so that all who wish to be heard have adequate time. Mayor may grant additional time if needed. If several wish to speak on the same subject matter, a suggestion is that one speak and others express their support. This is to avoid repeat of subject matter, but the council can't require this. The last point is that citizens to be heard is not a time for questions and dialogue between council. It is a time for citizens to express their views and concerns, whether positive or and um, as a matter of course, dialogue is usually not allowed between those who comment during, citizen, or during uh, public hearings and the council. There's just a time for comment and, uh, and nothing more. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, 